that's really good. Oh, uh, by the way, I wanted to tell all of you, uh, you can move forward. You, you may see on the side, say, it says reserved, but it's reserved for Sabbath because our students are going to be here performing a program and we're going to have a lot of uh, visitors and it's reserved for the visitors. But since you are actually part of the constituents, you can move forward and sit closer so that you can enjoy the full height of our president and you'll have a little bit pain in the neck. Yeah. I've been a pain in the neck for a very long time. Do we have all the cards in? That's right. I, I almost forgot about the drawing. I do that too easily. Now, where are the prizes? They're in the back. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll ask Rick Bianco if he'll draw a card. Okay.
while she's doing that, welcome. Good to see you this evening. I'll also welcome those who are watching by way of internet. We are in the day and age, aren't we? So we're live streaming. We had a, a real bad storm. I'm actually surprised as many people came at Dayton meeting as there were. We'd had tornado warnings earlier in the day. We had storms going. We even had one come while we were there. But So the idea was some were not able to see. This would give them opportunity. All right. Well, that looks very well officially done. One of the newest American citizens. Will you please tell us who it is? and pronounce it correctly. Mm. I, I, it's Lily something. Lily Freiling. Oh, my, it worked. All right, one more. Yeah, you'll need to come and choose. Let's go ahead and have the second. Let's have Pedro choose this one. Melvin Hart. All right. Uh, Melvin Hatch. He wanted to give it to... Yeah, that's a blessed guy there. All right. Very good. They wanted your emails. They'll try to do a better job than Facebook at uh, keeping them private, but it will allow us to be able to make contact with you. And... Uh, and keep you in touch with news from the conference. Let's go ahead and start with prayer this evening. Lord God, I want to thank you for the beauty of the day and the chance to be together. I want to thank you for the church family in this region, all that they mean uh, to the work here and what they mean to us. I ask your blessing, your Holy Spirit's presence, and not only your Holy Spirit's presence in this, uh, this building, in this meeting, but in us. And we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, for worship this evening, um, going to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, when I was uh, a young pastor, I'd get asked to Sabbath schools. And when I did, I knew it was probably a lesson on David and Goliath. And... And when they would want me to be there and let the children be David, and they liked me to fall. Um, it was the most dangerous part of it, because at my height, you know, and the floors, we didn't always have the thickest carpet in those churches. And I would fall and come down with a huge crash, and they loved that. As I got older, they kept calling me. And I had to figure out a way so I could survive in order to be here this evening. I started to fall in slow motion. The older I've gotten, the slower the motion. And that way I go down, but I still live to tell the story later. Um, and we love that story. And I loved hearing those children sing those songs. First um, Samuel 17, uh, he, David's going, bringing things to his brothers. And he's left the sheep back at home. He hears Goliath speaking. And he asks why no one's doing anything about it. First, he's discouraged from, or his brothers tried to discourage him. They, they question his, um, uh, why he's here, what's he doing this, you know, you're showing off. And then he goes to, to see the king because Saul hears about it. And he says to Saul, let no man's heart fail him. Your servant will go and fight the Philistine." And then the king says to him, you are not able to go against the Philistine and fight with him. Aren't you glad that David didn't listen to any of them? Um, sometimes the discouragement could come from within those closest to us, um, which is a sad truth. Don't be discouraged, though. David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. When there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him, struck him, delivered it out of his mouth. There were some close calls there, weren't there? If he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. You notice where the focus is. Um, there's two things here. One is... 
he's doing something that we as Adventists have been reminded of um, by Ellen White, that we only have to fear for the future. If we accept, we have no fear for the future except we forget how God has led us in the past. When you study the, the children of Israel and their history, doesn't it surprise you often? They've had all these great miracles to set them free, and then they come up against the next challenge, and it's like they've never experienced anything. Um, so, so David's remembering what God has done in the past, and also he understands what the battle is about and who it's for and who is going to be fighting for him and with him. And he trusts in God. Um, Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. That makes me think of like when you've got to do something tough and then someone says, I'll pray for you. And you hope they mean it. Um, and when he comes out, Goliath is ticked off because he's waited 40 days. And this is the best you can send me. I mean, what honor is there in this? I could kick this guy with an arm tied behind me type of thing. And they start trash talking. I'll feed your flesh to the birds of the air, beasts of the field. And David says, I will do that to you because you have defied the name of the Lord our God. And today he'll deliver you into my hands. And that's exactly what happened. One of the things I love about this is... <clears throat> As you read it, he didn't just go out there. First, he goes out with the armor of Saul. I mean, and he comes back, I can't use this. But then he goes out as he was, a shepherd. Um, the typology is powerful. It's a hillside, single combat. And who, if whoever wins on that hillside will either be slaves or set free. It's very much Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the son of David and the father of David and he fights on a hilltop and wins and sets us free but he went and he says he ran toward the giant um, we face some awfully big giants at least they seem that way to us and praise the Lord we have seen God have victories for us and we need to honor and glorify his name for what he has done the thought tonight is that there's a rock for every giant. Um, we've all known this in our own lives, haven't we? That just because God gives us victories doesn't mean the devil's not going to throw something at us again. I'll say this for it. The devil probably has every sin under the sun except for, um, well, he's not lazy. But there is a rock for every giant. So the real need is for us to remember who we are, how God has led us, and to trust him, absolutely trust him, and that there really is a rock for every giant. So we will praise God. The reports, they're almost like a praise report, and that's good news. It wasn't that way four years ago. God has taken us through hard times. But we all know there are harder times coming. So let us decide in our heart, collectively, and between ourselves and God, that we will face whatever comes our way by faith and faithfully. And greater is he who is with us and in us than he is in the world. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for loving us so much. I, you amaze us with your grace hard times we're in, Lord. I'm glad we're not alone. Jesus, we want more for you. We want more in Ohio not to stack any stat sheet, but because people need you. We want more in Ohio because these are your children. Show us ways we've maybe never even thought of May your Holy Spirit's blessing be on and in. And may the plans that come about not be ours, but yours. May you do such amazing things in the next years ahead that people will have to look, if they hear about it, they'll have to say something like, that really had to be God. There's no way they could have done that. 
for then we will be safe and you will be glorified. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for being here. I'm going to invite our conference secretary and ministerial director to come up and share the first reports with you. And uh, Oswaldo Magana, truly, he and his wife, some of the newest Americans, and they're out to make America great again. <laughs> off here because I cannot be standing in one place. It's a problem for me. Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing today? Good, good. Okay, we will be sharing with you a couple of reports, secretaries and ministerial. I want to begin with secretary's report. Um, there are so many things that we can talk about uh, when we speak about the secretary's report. Uh, so many information that could be given, uh, but there, w one of the reports that, um, or the areas that we really have to take care of is the statistical report uh, in regards to membership, church growth, and um, that's one of my passions in life. You know, whenever we talk and whenever we think about the salvation of souls, it really reaches to the bottom of my heart. So I would want to take my time today and reporting in regards to what has happened in the past four years uh, related to, to church growth, okay, related to church growth. Um, and I will say that whenever we talk about bringing souls to the feet of Jesus, that only happens in local congregations. Do you agree with me? It's in churches where church growth happens, where we see individuals coming and surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. And um, let me see. Um, probably you all would be able to see. Uh, this is uh, what has happened from 2014 to 2018, which is our last quadrennium. But I would like to take you back to the quadrennium before this, okay, before this, so we can have a comparison of what happened in that quadrennium and this one that is just finishing. Um, in that quadrennium, 2010 to 2014, we had 1,044 baptisms and professions by faith. 1,044. If you look at the screen carefully, it, it might be a little hard. Um, we have in this quadrennium from 2014 to 2018, the first quarter, we have 1,662 new members by baptism and profession by faith, which means that we have had an increase of 618 this quadrennium compared to the last one. Now, I just want to clarify something. My interest today here is not to talk about numbers. My interest today is to share with you how wonderful it is to see 1,662 new members that have surrendered their lives to Jesus and preparing their, themselves for the kingdom of heaven. So it's much more than numbers. We're not talking about oranges or pears or, 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 or apples. We're talking about people saved for the kingdom of heaven. 1,662. Don't we praise God for that? It's wonderful, and that is what brings me to mention those numbers today. Um, if we had baptisms, our churches definitely need to be growing. And we had in this quadrennium four mission churches becoming organized congregations or organized churches. Besides that, we had in this quadrennium that is also finishing 14 new church plants. 14 
new church plants. That's just wonderful to see new congregations established in different areas of our conference. It's wonderful. Now, I met with one of our retired pastors who is helping us with one of those church plants, Pastor Ken Ferguson. And he told me, our church plant, we have an attendance of about 25 members. But I need to ask you a question. What must we do to begin another church plant in Massillon? We have one that just begun with approximately 25 people. But we want to begin in 2019 another church plant. And that church plant is being worked with the Canton Church. And he is the one that is really leading there. He is one of our retired pastors. Maybe some of you would know Ken Ferguson. Um, wonderful work that is being done. Another beauty of how the Lord really works when it comes to church planting. We have our first Seventh-day Adventist Amish congregation. And at this moment, we are working so that it would become a company. Why do we say Amish Seventh-day Adventists? Because they still continue with their Amish culture, their way of dressing and doing things. The only difference with this Amish group is that they have the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist church in their hearts wonderful it's it's indeed a blessing now i i am sure that the lord wants to do even greater things in ohio as we begin a new quadrennium after may 6th and beloved the lord wants us to be part of this and i read this quotation someone must fulfill the commission of christ someone must carry on the work which he began to do on earth. And the church has been given this privilege. For this purpose, it has been organized. Why then have not church members accepted the responsibility? Beloved, if we join our hands, pastors together with lay members, even greater things will continue happening. This work cannot be finished by pastors alone. We need the combination, lay members and pastors, for the preaching of the gospel to be finished and for Jesus to return for the second time. So let us join hands together in presenting Christ to so many people that still do not know about his love. Let us continue now with the ministerial report. Let's go with the ministerial report now. I would like to share with you a little information in regards to our pastors. I give honor and glory to God because I am sure that what has happened in the Ohio Conference, God has used our pastors to be able to work together with their churches for wonderful things to happen. And I have a wonderful quotation that I would like to share with you all, taken from pastoral ministry, and it says the following. It says, The more that a minister of Christ associates with the master, true contemplation of his life and character, the more closely will he resemble him who is that he the pastor and the him is jesus so the closer the minister associates with the master the pastor will be able to resemble jesus christ and be better qualified will he be to teach his truths every feature in the life of the great example should be studied with care and close converse should be held with him through prayer of living faith. Thus will the defective human character be transformed into the image of his glorious character. Thus will the teacher of the truth be prepared to lead souls to Jesus Christ. I am also very happy to say that in the Ohio Conference, 
we have 61 pastors and that does include our church or district pastors department heads and uh, a couple of us that are in the administration 61 pastors in the Ohio conference 50 are full-time pastors 11 are part-time who are working a specific amount of hours every week of that total amount 12 of our pastors have earned doctoral degrees and one of them is presently working on his doctoral degree and we have him right here with us today 33 of them have a master's degree and 16 have a bachelor's degree now um, As I mentioned, giving the secretary's report in regards to church growth, I did say that we need to have the combination of work done by pastors and lay members. Three years ago, we began the program known as Lay Pastoral and Elders Assistant Training. And we have had several a lot of our lay members coming to be trained and how wonderful it is to hear from 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 different people how blessed they have been after those lay members go back to their churches and they can give even a better support to their pastors helping in this wonderful work that needs to be done we need that combination lay members joining hands together with their pastors. The work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and women comprising our church membership rally to do the work and unite their efforts with those of ministers and church officers. We also have five of our pastors that have completed the internship requirements of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Ohio Conference, which have led to the ordination of these five pastors. Up to this point, of those five, three of them have been ordained. And on May 5th, there are two others that will also be ordained and we praise God for the dedication of each one of our pastors and I should end with this as you all know and as you all are aware we do not have perfect pastors also none of our members or lay members are perfect but we continually give praises to God and we honor and glorify his name for the dedicated, skilled, and gifted pastors that we have in our conference. The many blessings that have been achieved during these past four years is because of their dedication and love for the flock that, has, that God has commended into their hands. May God bless our pastors. May God bless each lay member of the Ohio Conference. May we continue working together and we would be able to see even greater things in this new quadrennium. Thank you, Elder Magana. I'd like to call Michael Gilkey uh, up here to give Treasury Report. For some of you, this may be the first time to meet him in person. It chokes me up. I'm actually just so glad we have a treasurer again. Um, Michael came to us, and uh, it was quite a lengthy journey of searching, prayer. And in my opinion, he brought someone with expertise in areas that we as a conference needed right now for what we face presently and for us to move forward. So welcome him, get acquainted with him, and you'll get to hear a report from him at this time. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I've been here for just over two months now. Of course, a lot of people come to me and say, well, you're moving up here from the south. What do you think of the weather? Right? I said, well, I wait a couple days and it usually gets better. Like this week, right? Snow, cold, beautiful day yesterday, and then the wind today. So who knows what's going to come next. 
Um, I tell you what, it's a joy to work with this team that we have at the uh, Ohio Conference. They are dedicated. They are motivated for developing more avenues for ministry and bringing more to Christ. And with what's going on in the world right now, we, we have to do better. We will do better. And that is a focus that we have for 2018. There we go. Get used to the room here. So, um, as I said, we're going to have some very exciting things in 2018, but uh, the first I'm going to do is just talk about uh, Treasury, where we've been for the last four years. Um, you know, when, it's, it's amazing to me, when you set a vision and a goal and you have a strategic plan for what you want to be able to do, you can achieve amazing things when you're working together. And so if you're in one accord and you're working toward a common goal, which we have, which is growing younger and improving our ministry outreach, we're going to be able to do amazing things. So when you start talking about treasury, you know, one of the first words that comes to mind is treasury. But what does that mean? And especially, what does that mean to you? Um, I know from my perspective, uh, especially as a treasurer, it's all about money, right? Do we have enough money to do the things that we want to do with regards to ministry, for education, for different programs, outreach, revelation seminars, whatever it might be? But you know, the bottom line with stewardship is it really is all about the relationship that we have with God. So I'm going to show you a quick video, and there's two things that I want to talk about after that. So here we go. Two men bring an offering to the Lord, one of the fruit of the ground, the other the firstborn of his flock. God accepts one and rejects the other. Why? Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The word tells us clearly that the offering Abel brought was the firstborn of his flock. But it doesn't say that Cain brought the first fruits of his crops. It simply says, in the process of time, Cain brought an offering. Cain harvested his crops and over time gathered enough to bring an offering. It was an offering on Cain's terms. God accepted Abel's offering because it was the first of his increase. Cain's offering was rejected because it wasn't the first of his. Giving the first to God requires faith. When a firstborn lamb is born in a flock, it's not possible to know how many more lambs that you might produce. But Abel gave his firstborn lamb in faith, whereas Cain made sure he had enough for himself before giving to God. Many of us treat God the same way as Cain, making sure we have enough money before we see if there's anything left for God. Even if we give from what's left over, God can't accept the offering because it's not the first fruit. Other stories emphasize this truth. In the account of the fall of Jericho, the Lord gave strict instructions that the Israelites were not to keep any of the spoils from Jericho. All of it belonged to him, the Lord declared. Jericho belonged to the Lord because it was the first city conquered in the Promised Land. It was the first fruits. God withheld his blessing from Israel when one man took some of the spoils for himself. The first belongs to God. There was much more at stake than money when Abraham offered his firstborn son Isaac. When God asked for his son, Abraham didn't wait to have ten sons before giving Isaac. He gave the first when he only had one to give. Abraham had only the promise of having more sons. It took faith for Abraham to offer Isaac. Faith that God respected and blessed. And God did the same for us. He gave his first in the form of his son, his first and only begotten son, who was given to us while we were still sinners. God gave Jesus in faith that we might one day give our lives to him. The gift of his son, came before the blessing of our repentance and salvation. We give our first fruits in much the same way. Before we see the blessing of God, we give it in faith. Giving the first fruits of your income says to God, 
I recognize you first. I am putting you first in my life, and I trust you to take care of the rest. So what this uh, short uh, clip talked about was really first fruits. That's the first topic that it was mentioning. And when you look for a definition in this clip, it said, I'm putting God first in my life, and I trust God to take care of the rest. So that's really stepping out in faith. I mean, that's really what it's all about. And then you're giving the first to God, and, and with, with, with that faith and what we want to be able to do, the underlying uh, belief that we have is everything belongs to God in the first place. We're giving back to him, and then he's going to pr provide for our needs and moving forward. So the most important thing that I saw in that video, though, was our relationship to God. I mean, that's really what it comes all, ba all back to. And so it's your relationship to God. But what did God do for us? He gave his first and only begotten son, right? So he gave so that we have a chance for everlasting life. So stewardship is our role to God, and it's all about his ownership in that dynamic that he has with us. So when you take a look at tithe and what that means, the video did come out and say that it's 10% of our increase. So you're faithful, you're tithing, and that money is gonna be going to the storehouse to be distributed for ministry. That's really what this is all about, is that we're, as a collective, we're really trying to promote this, the, the beliefs that we have in the church. There's a better way, and we want to get this information out. Now, the other part of that is what we do in the Ohio Conference Treasury Department. So we have a fiduciary relationship with you, and what that means is that we have the highest standard of care to be watching this money and making sure that we're uh, watching the costs and expenses well so that we can allocate as much money as we possibly can for ministry. So let's take a look at what's come in since 2000. When you take a look at that graph, you know, it looks a little bit flat, but you have to keep in mind, 2008, we had a pretty, uh, a pretty bad economy. You know, I was in uh, banking at the time uh, and, uh, you know, can really relate to the downturn in the economy and, and all of that meant. But when you put a trend line on it, it might be a little hard to see, but off to the right side, you'll see that uh, not only did the tithe remain constant since 2010 in an upward direction, but the last three years, it's been above the trend line. So we're doing a lot right here in this state. Good programs are coming out. We've dealt with some, a lot of issues that, uh, that we had to own up to, and um, it's going well. So when you take a look at tithe distribution, you know, 60% goes to the Ohio Conference, 40% goes to the World Church. Uh, the 40% that goes to the World Church, you have the North American Division, uh, you've got the uh, Union, you've got the uh, retirement plan that we're having to continually fund. Um, nice thing that we do here in the Columbia Union is uh, we put money into a pot for some of the smaller conferences to give them more money to put into to ministry. And then, of course, the uh, yellow there is for our universities. Now, when you take a look at what we have uh, with the 60% that stays here, the majority of that money is going to pastoral and education. And then we have uh, Camp Mohaven, ministry, and administration. For net uh, asset trends, you see that we had some downturns and some uh, rough times there uh, in 2012, 13, 14, but we've been climbing back up which is always good to see. You can see a better uh, relationship in working capital. And the NAD policy says that you want to be around 100% uh, for working capital. We got very close in 2016. We dropped a little bit in 2017. But our goal is definitely to be right back up to that 100% for 2018. Another issue that we're really watching carefully is our health care expenses. When you put a trend line on that, the overall trend is upward, and uh, you know, 2017 was a bit hard on the conference with regards to uh, higher medical costs. We had some sick people, 
And um, you know, so we're watching that very closely going into 2018, and monthly we're discussing uh, how we're going to continue to fund that and what we can do in working with the Avenus Risk Management Team to monitor those costs and come up with solutions that might help. Um, the Ohio Trend is another program that you have here. And back in 2016, the Executive Committee changed the distribution uh, mechanism and more money was put back into the fund. So you can see uh, prior to that change, uh, you know, Mount Vernon Academy uh, was getting a lion's share of that amount. And then they changed that uh, to secondary schools, evangelism, and then we have school and church buildings that we're actually putting money towards. And Camp Mohaven, you have such a fantastic camp up there. There's more that we can do, and they have some very strong outreach programs to the community up there um, and, and elsewhere here within the state. Uh, but we can do more for uh, the youth groups. Uh, immersion was just up there, and you're going to hear more about that. We're 120 uh, young people gathered, and they're building bonds between different groups in different cities that we have here. Um, Vision Ohio, you know, when I first was caught by surprise about even contemplating being a treasurer up here, I went out to see what kind of videos or information you had on the Ohio conference. And I came across it, uh, a talk that Ron gave back in 2014. It was a video. And um, they needed to save the jobs of six pastors. And so he gave a plea to send money in, and the state responded. The jobs were saved. There was extra money for education. And without another discussion on the point, money has continued to come in almost to the tune of $400,000. And it's, again, being used for education and ministerial work. So when you talk about ministry right now, you can look at the basic programs that we've had for many years. And we're very proud of those. And they have worked extremely well. And will continue to work well in the future. But when you take a look at the church, which is the average age of, of an Adventist right now in North America is 57 years of age. And here in Ohio, it's around 62 years of age. You have what's called a, a dying church. I mean, we're not the only group that's facing that, but we have to face facts. So what do we need to do? And I like the initiative that Ron has been really talking about getting on board and, and supporting with money and funds and other people to help pastors and educate the, the members of, of, the, of the church to welcome people in, but we've got to go out and we have to grow young through social media, through different campaigns that we can start reaching everyone that we need to be able to reach, because it's a very um, cost-effective way to reach out to people with, with this uh, type of video. Uh, we can add urban ministries to that, disaster response, and of course we need to talk more about stewardship. Uh, you know, as a whole in, in this nation, uh, it's, it's less than 30% of people who are actually paying tithes. Now, if that's a total relationship that we're going to have with God, we need to step that up and understand that is one of the fundamental uh, concepts of, of what we're all about. But what we're going to be doing uh, also in Treasury is we're going to be working with the Union, the North American Division, and the General Conference to find avenues for additional funds. Like we are working with one where we have cultures that are non-English uh, speaking or non-American that we're going to be able to uh, bring in some funds for that, which then will not be taking from our ministry. We can put that into other programs. So we're going to have, uh, you know, thinking outside the box scenario of moving forward, of coming up with more money, supporting these things, working with our pastors, the leaders of the church, so that we can develop stronger programs, be uh, a great conference, and uh, bring more people to, uh, to God's work and the glory of God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. I want to ask my friend Andy to come up. Andy looks after finances, uh, and I'll, I'll probably narrow it too much, but I often think of corporation board types of items. And uh, those of you in Ohio, you've known Andy for even longer than I have. Thank you, Andy, for sharing. Thank you, Ron. Good evening. So I'm going to be taking you through the non-operating side of things for this quadrennium. So the first, uh, there's several funds here. We have a plant fund, a NODI fund, and endowment fund. We'll be looking at uh, uh, the investment in plant first. 
So during this quadrennium, these are the uh, uh, areas where we added. So we have the Harrison Church was purchased during this quadrennium, as well as here in Columbus, the Prince of Peace uh, Church. In Northern Ohio, we purchased a school, and that's for the Northern Ohio Adventist Academy. And then the conference, uh, we were donated a, a building in the Dayton area, and then the Camp Mohaven uh, bathhouse project continues. And if you recall, at the end of the last quadrennium, we had started that project, and uh, it continues, should be completed by May of this year. So next month, towards the end of the uh, month, we're gonna have a grand opening for that. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. Beyond the buildings uh, themselves, there are uh, some additions for projects. So here you see uh, anything over $10,000. Uh, I send out a letter at the end of the year or no, uh, near the first of the year and, and request churches to send me in any projects that they've had uh, that cost more than $10,000. So here are a few of those. Uh, we had uh, some parcels of land purchased, some uh, parking lots, kitchen remodel, and so forth. You can see there. Then in the unexpended plant fund, we uh, ended the year, this quadrennium, with $826,000. Now, how is that broke out? So the fund balance at the end of the year, uh, youth camp, had 250,000, the conference 332,000, residents we had 188,000, and then the ABC uh, had 55,000. Now, many of you remember that we don't own the ABC anymore. When we sold the ABC to Pacific Press, this is what came to us uh, for, for the equipment and so forth that we sold to Pacific Press. They gave us that amount. That's been sitting there uh, ever since then. All right, so looking at uh, unexpended plant, here's the dollar amounts. So we began uh, at the end of the first uh, year, 2014, we had 431,000 in the plant fund, and then 466, and then a big jump to 717,000 Again, ending the quadrennium with 826. And you probably wonder, so what happened between 15 and 16 that we got this big jump? Well, if, if you don't remember, I'm gonna help you. And that is, we, the camp purchased 50 acres that was adjacent to it. And we borrowed money from the conference for that, which is a payable, that is a decrease to the account. And so in 2016, the camp sold trees and was able to not only have money left over, but pay that debt back as well. So that's why that jump is there. And then we have uh, 826, uh, as well as some funds left over in uh, the camp area. And you saw that on the previous slide with 250,000. Moving on now to the annuity fund, uh, we've had many uh, maturities uh, over the years in annuity, and currently uh, we have 17,000 in the annuity fund. That's two annuities. One is a one-life annuity, and the other one is a deferred annuity. And so here you'll see uh, the maturities that uh, we've had through this time. A total of 146,000 uh, came in through maturities in the annuities. 130 came to the Ohio Conference unrestricted for ministry, and then another 15,000 into the endowment fund. And the annuity payments that went out during this quadrennium was 14,313. Now our endowment fund, uh, I put up uh, several years here, and these years are the ending years of uh, constituency sessions going back to 1998. I go back that far because my first constituency session with the Ohio Conference was ending that year in, uh, it was the end of 1998, May of 99 uh, was when we had the report. 
So I'd like to start there. And you can see 1998, then 2001, 2005, 2009, we were in that $2 million range, not a whole lot of growth there. And then in 2009, uh, between 2009 and 13, we had a large jump. And that's about the time that my good friend Harry Straub was hired, went out and really did a lot of solicitation in gifts, uh, asking people what it was that they'd like to support and so forth. And our endowments grew because of that. And then again, in uh, the end of this session here, you can see we ended with $4.5 million. And that is a 45% increase from last session to this one. And again, through this four years here, you see the, um, the donations for 14 was 413,000. Uh, 15, we had $745,000 donated. And then a few small amounts in the next years. Now with endowments, there's from that income, uh, we have 90% uh, of it goes towards purpose and then 10% of it goes towards administrative cost. So here you can see 147, 85, 129, 144,000 in income. And then that kind of relates to purpose through those years and then administrative cost. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. And those things help a lot of schools, don't yes. they? Students, people. I want to invite Rick Bianco, and I would just say, you know, when you hear about the cuttings of the trees, praise the Lord for when he connects us with people that know how to do things well. Um, I guess we had sold quite a few trees many years ago, but we didn't get much out of it for what we should have. Um, this is where it's cut for the health of the forest, and it's bringing in money for the camp. And praise the Lord, they're not in debt, they're in the black and they're able to minister more effectively. I loved having Rick Bianco here, also because you made it more than one year um, with me. We were going through um, superintendents faster than I could say help. Um, I love his energy. I love his positivity. I love how much he loves God and loves young people and the energy he's brought to this task. Not only that, he can cook chocolate chip cookies or bake them. I see, I don't know anything, but I could eat them on the last trip to Akron. And you have eaten quite a few. <laughs> Hello, Ohio Conference. It's good to see you all again. Uh, Rick Bianco here, and it has been my honor and privilege for the last almost two years to serve as the education superintendent uh, for schools. So much has gone on, not only in the last two years, but in the last four years within this conference. We just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. One of the things that's happening this year is this is the final year that we're gonna be offering honorary diplomas to those students that attended Mount Vernon Academy. While that's a, a sad thing in a lot of ways, one of the things that we have dedicated that we are going to do is to continue the excellence that Mount Vernon Academy has done for well over 100 years within Adventist education in Ohio. We're looking forward to seeing where that leads. We're so excited that we have this opportunity to uh, start new schools. There's a school up in the Lake Erie region called the Northern Ohio Adventist Academy in Sheffield Lake. The little school has pretty much started from nothing, but God has richly blessed in so many different ways. And we are slowly but surely building the population there. And we're hoping that that school continues to be a blessing in that area for, for many, many, many years to come. We have 11 schools right now with over 70 educators. And are you ready for this? With over 850 young people coming into our hallways each and every day to be educated by advanced educators for seven hours a day for a half a year. What an amazing opportunity. What an amazing witnessing opportunity that is for us. Speaking about witnessing, advanced education is a large evangelistic tool. We have 200 young people that come into our halls each and every day that are non-advanced, that are community students. 
and they get to interface with Advanced Educators every single day to get an Advanced Education to learn about Jesus Christ in their lives. Amen to that. That is a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Not only that, we have student, Karin students, we have students from, from Rwanda that we have taken into our schools, refugee uh, families that we have taken into our schools. They have a tremendous opportunity to get an amazing education because of support from Ohio Conference constituents like you. Our future is very bright as well. We have some big items that we are going to be participating in uh, in the future. And one of the things that we desperately need, the education office, all of our teachers, all of our schools, all of our communities that support those schools, all of our parents and all of our students, we need your prayers and your support as we move forward in the 21st century. Advanced Education Ohio is going to look different than it's ever done before, but it's going to be better than ever before. I look forward to seeing where God is going to lead us, and it's because of support from you, the constituents of the Ohio Conference, that we are able to affect young people each and every day and bring them to the foot of the cross. Thank you, and we look forward to work with you in the future. Take care, and God bless. Good evening, Central Ohio. It is good to see you all. I am super excited about Advanced Education in Ohio. There are so many things going on here. Not only do we have 850 young people in our schools, but we also have over 350 young people in our learning centers, such as Stepping Stones. Amen to that? So we have over 1,100, I want you to get this, over 1,100 young people that are interfacing with Advanced Educators and Advanced Institutions every single day during the week. Amen? We could not ask for a better witnessing tool in this state. I am a product of Advanced Education. I went to public school for the first eight years of my life. My grandmother sent me to Adventist school for Blue Mountain Academy and Union Springs Academy. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that without the soil being tilled, with me going to an Adventist school, that I would not be here today without that interface. And so whenever you hear about people talk about are our schools for ourselves or are our schools for others, I want you to think about something. This non-Adventist is standing before you today because I was sent to an Adventist school and I got that foundation for my future. Amen? So I want us to think about what Advanced Education means to us. Advanced Education means that we have an opportunity to affect young people that are not part of who we see each and every day, but are in communities that, are, that we live in, that are in communities in which our schools are a part of, that we can interface with them on a daily basis with people who have committed themselves to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen? I am excited about Advanced Education moving forward. And if you can't feel that, I'll try harder next time. Okay, but I want you all to know one last thing. We feel your prayers, and we appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support. Our young people need it now more than ever. If you think it was hard whenever you were growing up to find Jesus, you have no idea how hard it is today. We need your prayers, and we need your support, and the next four years are going to be better than the last. Thank you so much. Amen. I, th I think it's important because we went through a lot of trauma. Um, how many, uh, we have quite a few more students actually in our schools now than we did four years or even two years ago. In the last three years, this is exciting. Thank you, Elder Halverson. This is exciting. We are up over 20% in the last three years in our schools. How many of us would love to have that return long term? 20% over three years. And another thing, I know you're going to ask the question, so I'm going to head you off at the pass. Okay? Last year, we had over 20 young people from our state that wanted to go to a boarding academy that this conference, you, the constituencies of this conference, helped support 20 young people to go to boarding schools across this country from, to advanced boarding schools. Not only that, in the last three years, it's over 80 young people. So we have not lost those young people that have wanted to go to boarding school. We as a conference, you as a constituent, have supported those people to still be able to get an advanced education out of boarding school if they so chose to do so. Because many need that. And they're actually, yes.
Okay, that, that's a, so you're talking about like Spring Valley and high school. We have over 120 something students that are in our uh, academy age uh, students. I think if I remember correctly, the last year uh, with Mount Vernon included, I think it was like 155, 160 or somewhere around there with that. But there are things that we are working on in the future to help out with the ac academy age students. Yeah, uh, but as far as our constituency, we had a minority at um, Mount Vernon when it when it closed. Actually, it, it, does that count the academy, the ones we're sending? What I found is, okay, and it doesn't count that, which puts it up much higher. Um, what I found is there are young people that are actually able to go now because $5,000 is a sizable help in a year. So we give 2500 each semester for them, and it's making a difference for some of our Ohio kids to be able to, yes. And so that fits with the growing young. Um, I can tell you this, I've been on NAD committee since I was a young man, and that was a long time ago, um, because of where I pastored and such. So 20 some years probably. Uh, this is not the trend in North America. Um, most conferences are losing. Now, we have an advantage in that. We have a thing called um, Ed Choice. It's an advantage and it's a challenge because it allows students to come, so it's a mission project, but it also is challenging because as far as staffing teachers in schools, we had the old style of, you thought if you had this many teachers, those were you know, all Adventist kids, so there's probably some tithe. Um, that's different for us now, but our outreach possibility is even, is even greater. Ed, Edward youth, and a lot of other things. That's right. Thank you. Good evening. So the youth department report is through a video, and the reason we did a video is because we run about six ministries, and uh, we've created teams in each ministry, and I wanted you to get to know some of those team members and let them share about where we've been and the dreams and the vision for the youth department for us to grow younger. So here's the video. We are tremendously grateful for what the Lord has been doing in and through the lives of the youth and young adults here in Ohio. Our goal is to incite a movement of youth and young adults who will share the gospel message and prepare for the coming of Jesus. We have multiple ministries that come out of the youth department. We have summer camp, adventures, pathfinders, high school ministries, public campuses, and young adult ministries. And we desire to create teams in each one of these ministries to be able to mentor leaders who will mentor our youth and young adults. As summer camp director, we could talk about the numbers and how it has grown over the years, but what really excites me about summer camp are the stories of transformation in the lives of children and youth. One of the things that I love about Camp Mohaven is the impact it has on your children. I have three boys myself and they have attended camp for numerous years. When they get home at the end of camp, I love that they are talking about it. They're talking about their experiences spiritually. This past summer, I got to see my son be baptized and it was just a really special time for him. You know, it's not what you usually think of for a baptism, but for him it meant a lot um, for it to be at camp. Another ministry is Adventurers and Pathfinders. Within the last couple of years, we have combined the leadership and we've planned out the next six years. The theme for the next six years is character. We will look at stories and individuals in the Bible that have shown and exhibited Christ-like character. I see a lot of you know, young people growing to you know, leadership roles and it excites me more than anything because I see a brighter future for a high conference. When kids choose to be involved in something that's related to their church, they're much more likely to be personally engaged in it, that 
will probably have the best opportunity to provide the background that means that they may be involved with their church when they're 35. And a critical age for our youth in making decisions of a lifelong commitment to Jesus is at high school. And I'm proud of our youth pastors who are collaborating together in discipling our high school students. High school kids want biblical and theological depth. So Pastor Edward and the other youth leaders from around the conference, we get together and we strategically and intentionally plan events for youth from around the conference and around the state to come together. And, and so ultimately what we're trying to accomplish here in Ohio and in several of our youth events is to intentionally create that space, hang out, have fun, but then to dive deep into a, a biblical and theological um, realm where we can struggle and wrestle with the things that are really relevant in their thinking and in their world and in their culture and then apply it. As high school students graduate and find their identity in Christ, college is an opportunity where they can deepen their faith. We want to see a campus ministry on five major campuses in Ohio. Ohio has a lot of really large campuses and so we want to see student groups growing and emerging on those campuses. Here at Case Western it seems that spirituality is the last thing on students minds. They leave the comforts of their home to study really hard and get that high paying six figure salary job. However, I found that students are truly seeking for a purpose. They're seeking for something deeper in life. We want to see our brothers and sisters in heaven. I feel like there are a lot of people that are really seeking the truth and campus ministry is important because we know that yeah, there are true seekers out there. Our young adults are active, passionate, living out our dream of mentorship by design. It's such a privilege to partner with our young adults in ministry. Young adults are a lot more active than they think. And that's one thing I know that coming to Emergent has been awesome to see so many people are active. They're involved in ministries. They're doing all kinds of awesome things. We're about unity and we want to just definitely fellowship with people because a lot of times we feel like you're the only one because even just being here being able to talk to people they feel the same way that there's more than just me who believes in the king of kings there's more than just me and my age group who has a passion to serve our hearts cry is for our youth and young adults to follow jesus in a transformative faith that enriches all generations our leaders invite you to join us on this journey my call to our church family is to listen to these high schools. This is a generation that seeks to be authentic. They, they want to be leaders. We can definitely take our church to that next level here in Ohio. The young people need, you know, mentors. And one person mentoring, you know, a child, not just your own child. It will help us, you know, groom up this youth and you know, young people that we have here in Ohio. We are here and we are passionate about what you have taught us. So have faith, not just in us, but in you, that you have done a very good job instilling in the young adults of Ohio, the God that you serve. Amen. Um, just young adults, we, we often lose um, people after academy, if not after grade school, if they're not a part of school. Um, but after, when they go to college and, and after that, share the growth the last three years with our young adult, just the, even the meeting at Immersion. Okay. So just a couple of things. Well, I have one here, but just a couple of things about our young adult ministry, Immersion. We started three years ago called Immersion. We had 40 that came out the first year. And then two years ago, we had 80 that came out. And we had Elder Halverson and Buffy there uh, to uh, teach on prayer. This year in February, we had 120, and we praise God. And the other thing that's amazing is, uh, well, two things. One is uh, Charday, who is the young adult director for Allegheny West, called me up and said, we want to bring about 20 young adults. Can we come? Of course. And, and so we got together into regions, and we prayed together on how we can continue being involved in our churches after we go home. So this coming Sabbath, I'm meeting with young adults in Dayton. And next Sabbath, I'm meeting with young adults in Cleveland. It's not only just the one event at camp. Young adults want to be involved in their communities and their churches. And just pray for our young adults. They're excited. And so thank you for your prayers and support. And, and I've seen the last few years, when they're up there, even on Saturday night, rather than some social time, I mean, they ended up wanting to talk to me. That's boring. But, um, it, it, but huddling together, and this whole idea of our state, there is a very natural feeling to different regions, 
our churches know each other. Our young adults are there. And it's not just about the event. It's about how can we reach out to public campuses, public universities. I mean, talk about an evangelistic center ought to be. We have huge ones in the state. Um, how can we do different ministries? And they are capable of doing those things. But they're connecting, and they're planning, and they're, they're acting on it. So it's an exciting time with young adults. Dr. Peter Simpson, Hispanic coordinator, you are going to love this report. Thank you, and good evening to everyone. We are really excited to give this report and to give honor to our God for so many things that the Lord is doing in this community, Hispanic community. Uh, this is the report for the last quadrennium. And let me start here with the membership of the church. In 2013, we had 841 members in Ohio. That was all what we had, but in 2017, four years later, by the grace of the Lord, we are 1,313 members in the Ohio Conference. This is really great, and we praise the name of the Lord for what He is really doing. This is 472 more members than the uh, last quadrennium that we had. So this is really uh, a huge increase in our membership. This is a 56% increase in membership from one quadrennium to this new one quadrennium. So we praise the name of the Lord for what he is really doing in the Hispanic ministry. Baptism. People that come from the world to surrender their life to Jesus, 2010, 2013, 241 people came to join the Seventh-day Adventist message. But in this quadrennium, 2014, 2017, 561 people came to the feet of Jesus. We praise the name of the Lord because we are bringing more people to the feet of God through the baptism. And this will give us a difference of 316 people. You know, this number is actually higher than this number that we did in the whole quadrennium. So we praise the name of the Lord for so many people that is coming to the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hispanic ministry. Praise the Lord for that. What that mean? That mean a one hundred and twenty nine percent increase of uh, a baptism in this quadrennium related with the last quadrennium so we praise the name of the lord for that one good thing talking about baptism well you could see here 2014 was 75 people got baptized then 107 were baptized 2015 then 150 and finally last year was 229 people coming to the lord we we praise the name of the lord because we have uh, we have uh, uh, members with the passion to go and look for others that they are not in the church yet to come to bring them to the feet of the lord so praise the lord for that one important thing that we want to remark is that in last year uh, September 2nd, 2017, in one day, just one day, 103 people were baptized just in one day by the grace of the Lord. That was really great. And I want to present a picture. I, I hope it's, it's clear enough. I hope that. <laughs> now, when I made my worship, I didn't know there would be this picture of Goliath. And I didn't know till this picture that David was Hispanic. You see him to my right? <laughs> that is the illustration of his sermon. So, so, so uh, um, we are really excited to see that in one day, it took us about more than 10 years to baptize 100 people in one day. Um, 
was getting baptized and we were able to be connected from one side to the other we were able to see what was taking place in columbus in cleveland in, in dayton and all around in the in the same day just because the technology allows us to do something like that so we praise the name of the lord for that but after we seen people coming to the lord uh, we we seen people being baptized we realized that we need to have congregation as well and let me tell you that in 2013 we had 14 congregation hispanic congregation in ohio conference but in 2017 by the grace of the lord now we could say that we have 22 hispanic congregation all around the conference so we praise the name of the lord because it's not just people coming into the church but churches uh companies or church plants that is coming also uh, to be part of the Ohio Conference. This is a 57% increase in congregations. So we're still growing, not just in people, but also in congregations. Now you can see those 22 congregations are divided into eight churches. You have the names there of the churches. Then we have five mission churches that is part of those 22 congregations and then nine church plants that you have the names of those church plants to complete 22 congregations in the ohio conference we praise the name of the lord because we are increasing also the congregations in the ohio conference pastors yes in 2013 we had four full-time pastors to attend these congregations but after the growth we had in 2017 we have a pastor four full-time pastors and four associate pastors to cover and to take care of these congregations so we praise the name of the lord and we thanks also the uh, administration of the ohio conference that was really uh, able and willing to support the growth of the hispanic ministry in the ohio conference now if we have people coming to the feet of jesus members if we have congregations if we have pastors we're supposed to have also support uh financial support for that so in the last quadrennium 2010 2013 we uh brought to the church 1.9 million dollars that was the last quadrillion one in tights right tights that was in the last quadrillion 1.9 but this quadrillion 2014 2017 by the grace of the lord was 2.9 million dollars were brought to the church for these 22 congregations i said praise the name of the lord for that what that mean that mean one million um, thirty three thousand dollars additional that came these quadrennials to the ohio conference for the support of the mission and we praise the name of the lord for that as well this is a 52.91 percent increase in tithes so this is consistently not just people coming, not just congregation, not just pastors, but also supporting the, 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 the mission with the tithes. So we praise the name of God for that. And finally, let me tell you that this year we had the great news, the celebration to uh, one online radio station for Hispanic ministry we had the inauguration of this station 24 7 preaching the gospel giving the lord news to everybody that could be rich and we are very excited this is the address where you could find it and uh, we are preaching uh, uh, um, so many uh, messages and let me tell you and through several programs we have in prayer programs connecting all the churches all the congregation to pray we have health programs we have children programs 
they are very interested to to listen to those programs we have youth programs women programs and family programs in that radio station so the church is being fed the church is 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 getting uh, uh messages from this radio um, radio station so that we can keep not just um taking those message, messages for us but also to have uh this message for others that doesn't know the truth so we praise the name of the lord for this radio station and we know that through this we will reach so many others in this quadrillion so summarizing what new we could find in his party ministry in this quadrillion 561 new members nine new congregations four additional pastors one million additional dollars and one online radio station that is new and all of this is because god is so good to god be the glory thank you um i'm going to hand this off because um, those of you who've been here before know this is my powerpoint and my thumb drive um, i'm technologically challenged praise the lord for what he's doing um, really a lot of their outreach is by small groups truly and then you have small groups and you have two weeks of prayer for reaping because there's been bible studies there's fellowship there's love and care and then there's call to decision yes I just want to make a plug in here for uh, Peter. Peter is coming this coming Sabbath here in our church, 2.30 in the afternoon. So you can finish your worship in your church and just come and join us here. Peter is going to do a training for us. He's not just a, a pastor. Uh, he's a professor who uh, has extreme knowledge in how to grow churches, and he has done and this in eight different countries, including here in the United States. So please, if you can, uh, devote this uh, two, two and a half hours this Sabbath, you're going to be tremendously blessed. And don't think of going anywhere. I know other presidents, and I just don't trust them. Okay, so uh, you know, you're, you're here in Ohio, all right. Um, our Mohaven camp report, and uh, we'll share this, and you'll get to see Dave. Um, I've been having prayer for him at the meetings a lot of you know he's been struggling with cancer he means so much to us Jim I love seeing you here Jim you're on our our camp board would you be willing to have the prayer this evening for Dave when, he, when this report is finished welcome to Camp Mohaven beautiful spot on the Mohican River we're blessed to have 700 acres in Danville Ohio we're blessed that our forefathers had this vision to buy this property so we could enjoy it and our children can enjoy it and we can come here and fellowship and get to know Jesus out in nature hi I'm Dave Robinson camp manager here at Camp Mohaven as you drive into the camp you'll see on the back of my shop a beautiful team of horses that have been painted there I sure like them and I hope you enjoy them as you come driving into the camp each time here at Camp Mohaven we have 30 horses it's a huge part of our ministry here at camp we've partnered with our community the Danville local school district the teacher that is in charge of the at-risk children have been bringing them out here to camp to work with the horses twice a week it was about five years ago Lisa Muncy came out with her class of at-risk youth she saw the attention span of kids that could only go like five minutes go to 20 to 30 minutes brushing or doing something here at the barn she talked to the school to see if she could make coming to the barn each week part of her program with these kids we started with five kids five years ago and we have two days now Mondays and Fridays and a total of around 35 kids it's a ministry when Christ was on this earth he he healed and fed people before he ever preached the gospel camp Mohaven during the winter is healing and feeding and in the summer when we have summer camp here then they're teaching as you can see the horse program is a huge part of the ministry here at Camp Mohaven. In 2010, a church member in Worthington saw in the bulletin about our horses here at Mohaven. And since 2010, he has donated all the hay for our horse program. This gift to the camp has totaled over $125,000. 
We've been able to have the horse program that we need because of his generous gift. It's wonderful to be part of the Adventist community too. We have pathfinders that come and use the camp. We have young adults. We have church groups. We have our youth camp. And to facilitate all these new events, we're having to add on. We've added two new bathhouses that will be finished this year so we can enjoy them for camp meeting. And we're constantly improving the camp as we go. So as we go forward here at Camp Mohaven for the next four years, we want to increase the occupancy. We want to increase the appeal. We want you to be part of this community. So join us as we enjoy camp meetings and other events here at Camp Mohaven. Amen. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to report this. Our camp is loved in that community. I wish that was always the story. That is the story of Camp Mohaven, and it, what a testimony it is to that area. Would you, my friend? I'd just like to put in a plug for uh, May the 27th. Yes. It's been six long years <laughs> it has been. to get the bathhouses finished, and um, we're really looking forward to that. Yeah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to uh, thank you so much for our forefathers and yes. in presenting Camp Mohaven to the conference. And the ministry that goes on there today, the young minds that are led to Christ through the different ministries, uh, not only through the horse ministry, but uh, our summer camp ministry, our young people's ministry, uh, people that go to Camp Mohaven come away blessed. And we thank you for that. We wanna lift up Dave Robinson and Karen at this time. Uh, Dave is uh, having a rough road to go. He and I talk a lot with each other and try to encourage one another. And so I just want to lift him up to put your loving hand on him and heal him and put your loving arms around him to let him know. And I know he knows you care. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to ask Harry Straub to come up and share about planned giving. Um, frankly, it's really nice to be a part of uh, town halls when really every report is truly a praise report and not just a report. See, I'm not, I, I, I'm with Ron, technology uh, operator. Um, it's tough to, to follow the uh, Camp Mohaven one because Dave is such a good friend. I've known him for 25, 30 years, going back to Michigan. And uh, please pray for him at, every day um, we do at the office. Uh, plan giving. We had an audit a couple years ago, and we had a A accreditation. What is that? It's the highest accreditation we can get. Not only that, the auditors couldn't find anything wrong. My secretary just uh, started with us at that point, and I told her, listen, it's downhill from here. <laughs> but we're pretty proud of that. Andy went over the endowment fund, so let me just get a couple things here. We had an increase of $1.4 million in our endowment fund. I'm pretty happy with that. As he said, 45% increase. We had an additional endowment that was set up in January and was funded uh, in March of 275000 This is the great thing. If you remember, he showed you something, I think it was about $3 million one back in 2009 something like that and we've had this big increase over the last few years but since 84 we've paid out 2.9 million dollars 2.9 million dollars we still have the 4.5 in investments that's going to continue to pay out 2.9 million dollars it's helped a lot of kids go to school we've expanded it 
We've gone to uh, endowments for capital improvement for a couple of schools. Um, we've got elder care down in Cincinnati. So it's spread out a lot, not just with the kids today. In the last four years, $435,000 was used for purpose. Four new endowments were established. So they're going to start to increase. I think both, most of them were 15 and 16. And four others have been activated. What does that mean? It, it was above $25,000. They start to pay out the purpose. And four of them reached that over the last four years. One of the neat ones is the highest GPA for uh, high school students. And it's calculated at the end of their first semester in their junior year. These kids, <laughs> 4.0s, one class had four 4.0s. Uh, as a student that never got there, uh, I think it's disgusting sometimes, but I'm really proud of these kids. Did a lot of work. For the last 34 years, the endowment program has been quite a blessing to a lot of people. What a legacy. And we will not know what the outcome of these funds will be until we get to heaven. And I tell you what, with all the stuff that's going on, the sicknesses and things, I'm looking forward to that day. In the last four years, we had $1.8 million in maturities. What does that mean? Well, some people passed away. And because of their estate planning, They've left $1.8 million to the Ohio Conference to further the work in this uh, conference. We're here to assist with wills, trusts, power of attorneys. You know, if you pass away without a will, it doesn't make a difference to the government, to the court, what kind of giving patterns you've had during your lifetime. They won't care. Nothing will go to your church, your charity. The only way you're going to be able to do that is to have a, a plan giving or a, uh, a, a will or a trust. So if you don't have one, uh, Buffy asked last time, how many people have wills in the church? Well, in the, in the United States, it's about 30%. You think that the Adventists would be a little bit better? We are. We're at 40%. So there's a lot of work to do. I want to tell a little story about Betty. I'm Harry Straub, Director of Plan Giving for the Ohio Conference of the Adventists. We are blessed having these 700 acres out here in Danville, but we're also looking to improve our camp and the facilities out here. A few years ago, we started the bathhouse project with a donation from the estate of the Barnes family. The Camp Mohaven Board voted to name this bathhouse the Barnes Bathhouse, which is approximately 200 yards from the horse barn and across the road from the challenge course. You know, Dave Robinson just isn't the camp director out here. He's also the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Delaware, Ohio. He also has in his services a God showing off moment, and he talks about the camp. After one of these God showing off moments at his church, one of his members, Betty Taylor, contacted the plan giving department to see what she can do to help the camp. I visited with Betty and we talked about the different options on how to help the camp. One of them was to help maintain the buildings, future projects, and even equipment. She decided to set up a endowment fund for capital improvement, maintenance, and equipment to help out the camp. Over the last three and a half years since the endowment was set up for Camp Mohaven, over 22 families have put in their estate plan to donate to this endowment. We are thankful for what God is doing here in Ohio through his people. Betty has a $25,000 for dollar match challenge, which will continue through 2018. Thank you for your support. Yeah, last year, she did a $12,500 match, and we raised $5,200 and some odd cents. So we, we left on the table $7,500 that we didn't get the match on. And uh, I was talking to Michael, and he goes, boy, that's, that was, that's too bad that happened. 
So I asked Betty, I said, uh, are you discouraged by that? She goes, no, I'm not discouraged. I want to challenge even more. Let's do 25000 this year. So we've raised a little over 4000 so far. I encourage you to uh, look for the promotions that are coming out, get online, and donate to this. Um, middle of January, I went to visit Betty, uh, and she showed me her statement for the end of 2017. You think the Lord gave her $25,000? No. He did give her $24,994.80. And we talked about faith, stepping out in faith, talking about miracles. That's, that's a miracle to me. Um, so in, in uh, March, we went to her financial advisor and to her uh, tax person and the financial advisor uh, showed me, showed us the statement for the end of the year, just going over investments and stuff. And the increase was thirty thousand two hundred dollars. And I go, Dina, it was twenty four thousand nine hundred. What, what's going on here? She goes, Well, don't you remember last year she donated fifty two hundred dollars? So not only did the Lord give her the fit twenty five thousand dollars for the match also gave her the $5,200 back from the year before. To be within $5.20, coincidence? I don't think so. Special lady, you know, if we step out in faith, if we prove him, what will he do for us? How to get in touch with me if you need to get a will or trust. Um, fill out this card. I'll be out in the, about after the meeting. We can set up an appointment or you can send that into the office and we'll get together. Thank you. You know, someone else is going to say they have the best job in the conference. And now uh, I do. Visiting with our members, the generosity, the love for their Lord and their church and their God is truly humbling to me and very encouraging to me. Thank you. Amen. It surely is. I'd like to ask Heidi Shoemaker forward to share a report both on communications and women's ministry. And Harry did take my uh, line there. I'm the one that always comes up and says, I have the best job. Okay. And the reason I feel like I have the best job is all of those stories and all of these reports you've heard, I get to hear regularly, and it's my job to take and share those. Um, what do you think about when you think about communications? Um, like I say, I have the privilege to take and share these things. I get to take and share about what's happening in our schools, our communities, our churches. We use multiple platforms and outlets. And these stories are shared not just with the members in Ohio, but within our union and across the country and in some cases across the world. Uh, Michael's been here. He's found some things that, uh, that I had uh, written, the stories I've shared, gone on to the review. Um, if you read the uh, Columbia Union Visitor this week, we've had a lot of our stories there. And uh, sometimes, um, Elder Halverson and I, we become the stories. We were up in the uh, Akron area two days ago where there's the uh, church plant Maslin Connections. And we actually were invited to be part of the baptisms there. I had the privilege of, of baptizing one of, helping to baptize one of the, the uh, young women. And uh, uh, Elder Halverson was able to uh, be there to help baptize Homer, one of the, uh, the gentlemen there. So communications just, it's, it's so broad. Uh, a lot of you, I think, think about the Columbia Union Visitor. That's great, it has a broad uh, uh, reading base, but it is only 10 issues a year, two pages a year, 20 pages. We have you know, nearly 100 churches and plants. That doesn't even include the schools. So we need to take and um, expand, and that's what we have done over the years. Um, how many of you here receive faith points? 
Excellent. If you don't, I encourage you to sign up. You can see me after. You can go to our website. But um, with Faith Points, we have that as an uh, e-blast and we have e-updates. You'll hear things about like what Jim had talked about on May 27th. Mo Haven, in addition to the bathhouse uh, completion, uh, they are taking and having their pool reopened. Um, they're, we're having a big party. We're going to have a bouncy house. We're going to have so many different things out there to take and celebrate the renovations of the pool and the completion of the bathhouse. Also at Mohaven, and we, we take and communicate that through different means, we're going to be having our one-day camp meeting. That is, uh, uh, let's see, it's the Sabbath of June 9th and uh, we will have Mike and Pam Tucker. So all of these things we try to communicate through different ways and Faith Points is one of them. Our second electronic publication is uh, Pray With a Friend and that is an e-blast that we send out monthly and right now it's coming from Buffy Halverson as prayer ministry coordinator and it contains a devotional thought, uh, select prayer requests, and a reminder to join the monthly prayer call. I'm glad to say that earlier this month, we were able to launch a brand new website. Uh, we listened to feedback from our pastors, our volunteers, our constituents, our educators. Our goal is to take and have a con the site be a convenient source of information for everyone. If somebody is coming into the conference or as a visitor, um, to our employees and everyone in between, we want it to be a one-stop shop, as it were. This is going to be a continually evolving project, and we welcome suggestions should you visit our website and say, oh, Heidi, I'd like to see this, or it might be helpful to our members if you had that. So we are open to suggestions, and I'm glad to say that in the coming weeks and months, we plan on introducing blogs, training modules, video messages, simplified giving options. That's probably one of the number one things we hear about is Adventist giving is nice, but when we hear a story about Mohaven, or if we hear a story about Mo, uh, the endowments, if we hear a story about the youth program, we want to be able to just hit a button and give. And that is what we are in the process of working on right now. These are just a few of the things that are on our new website, and I encourage you to continue to check back often so you can see what's new. Now we get to social media. Michael had talked a little bit about social media. We've talked about some different things along the way. It's a part of our strategy to grow young in reaching and retaining younger generations. Now I've talked with some of you here. I see some familiar faces. And we've talked about that. And some I know have concerns about the church using social media. Is it something we should be involved in? And rather than me explain this, um, I'd like to take and share a message from Jamie Dom. She is the digital strategist for the North American Division. She comes to us from the uh, Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and she has some, I think, enlightening information to share with you. For the first time in human history, every one of us has the potential to witness to the world via the power of social media. Facebook alone, with over 1.9 billion monthly active users, has become the world's largest country. This presents a bold new frontier for mission. We need to be intentional about reaching souls on these platforms that are already designed for engagement and relationship building. The average young person spends 7 to 12 hours a day behind a screen. 5 to 9 hours of that time is spent on social media. To accomplish our mission in the 21st century, we must reach people where they are and not where we want them to be. Over 100 years ago, these words were written, let every worker in the master's vineyard study, plan, devise methods to reach the people where they are. We must do something out of the common course of things. Join me for more videos, tips, and tutorials on how you can embrace digital evangelism. Did you catch that number of 1.9 billion? Since that video was recorded, we've gone over the 2 billion mark. Think of all those people we could be reaching and how many of those are here in the state of Ohio. I wanna take and share, oops, did I take and do? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> We'll take and get back to that.
It's the one right after the um, video there that has the little icons on it. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you go to about slide 85, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Just a little bit farther. I'm just going to take a buzz through these. For the first time in human history. I'm trying to get past her. I'm trying to get to the next slide. There we go. Thank you. Our conference is in the middle of designing a digital strategy around these objectives creating an integrated communication strategy that works together across our traditional as well as our dig digital promotions. We are training our team and our church leaders to embrace these techniques, helping to cultivate an atmosphere of creativity, innovation, and passion for our shared mission, guide you on a path to building meaningful connections and with members and our community online, and ultimately help with measure and achieve results. I encourage you to stay connected with the Ohio Conference. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and soon to be on Snapchat. We're even taking and exploring a Pinterest page. So wearing my communications hat, I'd like to take and encourage you, if you have a story to share, please take and let me know. They don't have to be gigantic stories. We are always looking to share how God is working here in Ohio. And if you have any questions on what any of the topics I've shared, please feel free to give me a call. Now I'm going to segue into my women's ministries hat. And I'd like to talk to you about what women's ministries is here in Ohio. The women's ministries department exists to encourage, equip, promote and challenge Adventist women in their journey as disciples of Jesus Christ and members of his church. We provide opportunities for women to deepen their faith and experience spiritual growth and renewal. We try to take and address the concerns, the real concerns of women, and we challenge Adventist women to use their talents and spiritual gifts for the glory of God in the home, church, and community. Now I'm always asked when the people are asked about women's, or women's ministries, isn't it just the retreat? And I'm here to tell you, no, it is so much more than re the retreats. While the retreats are very important and they uh, connect women, they spiritually feed women of all ages, we have taken and continued to grow that program. During our annual weekend retreats the last couple of years, we have been able to show God's love in very real and practical ways. One year, we only had about 70 or so ladies attend the retreat, but do you know that small number of ladies raised nearly $700 for a domestic violence shelter in Worcester, and that didn't even include the carloads of items donated to that shelter. Last fall, we had about 100 ladies who raised $800 for Dominion Intercessor Ministry, as well as two cardloads of diapers, clothing, strollers, and other goods to help African re uh, refugees who reside in Dayton. Women's Ministries is more than teas. We've taken and transitioned our annual camp meeting tea to an annual Celtic Christmas tea at our own Camp Mohaven back in 2015. The change of the venue and the theme allowed us to grow younger as a ministry with women of all ages attending. We can have little ones from 8 all the way to 88 coming there, and it's just wonderful to see that intergenerational connection. And what has really uh, happened, I think, is very unique the last year or two is we actually have women coming in from out of state that they either have heard about it and they come in and a lot of them are coming up to bring their non-Adventist relations, friends or whatnot to come to a Christian event. And so it really has a uh, wonderful reach and a, and a growth there. Our women's ministries has grown to include one day workshops to address some of our more sensitive topics topics that might not be comfortable in everyday um, conversation, but these are desperately needed by our women. We've had workshops um, addressing domestic violence. It was one of our more powerful topics, and we actually, I'm sad to say, had several women attend who were in actively abusive relationships. I'm not claiming that we're able to take and resolve these issues in one day, 
But what we are able to do is we're able to be a safe haven. We can offer tools and support, and we, we, can, we can take it and refer them to trained professionals who can take and help them. Another well-attended workshop was one on prayer. Uh, Buffy Halverson was here and uh, helped us go through learning how to pray through the Lord's Prayer, and it was just such a blessing to our ladies. Uh, one of our most popular series overall for the workshops has been conducted by your own here in this church, former Worthington member and elder Dr. Celeste Holbrook. We've had up to 50 ladies attend her sessions from both the um, Ohio Conference and the Allegheny West Conference. Dr. Holbrook has addressed reclaiming healthy intimacy after abuse, inspired intimacy, and the problem with pornography, which we opened to women as well as men, because unfortunately that is a subject that doesn't um, know gender, doesn't know family lines, it crosses it all. Uh, workshops such as these are ideal for our younger women and our families. Uh, not everyone can be away for an entire uh, weekend from their church or their church family. Uh, these programs, they run from 10 to 3 or so, they include lunch, and they allow women of all ages to be able to come and then return to their families the same day. Some future topics that we have are surviving abuse, healthy boundaries, breast cancer survivors, and divorce recovery. I'd like to also say that women's ministries is not just what the Ohio Conference can do and what we can do at the conference level. It is what is even more powerful happening in your churches, in your neck of the woods. Uh, we have women from across the conference who are making differences in their communities. They're witnessing in prisons. They're giving Bible studies. And in the case of the Columbus Eastwood Church, they're making blankets and praying over these blankets and giving them to preemies in the children's hospital right here in Columbus. Um, here are the recipients of cute little pictures of two recipients of the blankets, which were lovingly made and prayed over by women um, in their 20s all the way to their 70s. Um, the young boy there in the larger picture had spent so much time in the hospital and he wasn't able to go outside. His parents were given this blanket, and you can see he just loves it. He has a big old smile. And like I say, he wasn't able to go outside, but he was able to play on it and enjoy his blanket. Now think about it. You're a parent in one of the most difficult times of your life, you're given this wonderful gift. It's an incredible way to show God's love in a very real and practical way. And I'd like you to uh, contact me if you have any questions, if you want to share what's happening in your ministry, in your church. Um, I'll be glad to be of any service that I can for what's happening at the local level. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heidi. I'd like to ask Buffy uh, Halverson to come forward report about family ministries, prayer ministry, and pastoral spouse ministries. Um, one of the things that fall under my family ministries is the ministry spouses. The spouses of our ministers and the children of our ministers here in our conference. And something happened a couple of years ago that was so wonderful. Um, some of the ladies from the Columbus area joined with some of the ladies from the Dayton area and they put on a whole day for the pastor's wives. We had so much fun. We were blessed. We laughed. We ate. We studied the Bible. We prayed. We had music. Even the church ladies showed up. It was lots of fun. We just had a great time. And I just was so grateful f um, for those ladies who did that for us. Um, we also did a family camp for the Centerville Church a weekend. That was a lot of fun. Um, one thing that was really fun is Steph, our daughter, is also a marriage and family therapist. And she joined me, and we did a weekend marriage um, seminar at Mohaven. And we just had so much fun doing that. I also did one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I also did one at Xenia just a few weeks ago that was a lot of fun, too. When we step into prayer ministry, this is Ruthie Jacobson. Ruthie and Dawn joined us at the Clifton Church for a prayer weekend, and that was just uh, just an amazing weekend. Um, we had one at Westlake. Now, one of the probably most ongoing prayer things in our conference is something we started very, it was just started immediately. 
when we got here and realized some of the giants, some of the challenges that we faced here in Ohio, we knew that the only way that we could do it was through prayer. So we started um, every most Mondays at noon in the conference office. We joined together and we pray for an hour. We praise God. We confess We pray for our pastors, we pray for our churches, we pray for you. We pray for our schools and our teachers and um, just any issues that are coming up right then, any giants that we face, we have done so through Ohio Praise. We've been able to take this to many churches in the conference um, and to women's retreats. Um, We've been to Clark's Field. Um, We've done prayer seminars. Our next prayer seminar is actually going to be in Clifton Church in just a few weeks. Um, Pastors meetings. We have done Ohio Praise at pastors meetings. Um, Another thing that we really like to do is the Lord's Prayer Seminar. Ron joined me um, at Immersion doing it, something that we had not done together before, but it was a lot of fun. Um, We also joined together and did a Life Hacks Seminar up in Lima. It was kind of an entry uh, event for the community. We talked about stress and families and um, suffering, forgiveness, marriage. Um, every month, this is something else that we started. The first Monday night, you need to mark your calendar. The first Monday night of every month, from 8 to 9, we have a prayer call. And we do Ohio Praise. So you get to see what it's like. We really enjoy it. Here's the phone number. Our next prayer call is going to be May 7, and Edward is going to host it for us. Um, But we just like to invite you to just mark your calendar every every the first Monday of every month. I will continue to preach love and forgiveness for Ohio because love is one of the most important things. Jesus said that. Matthew 123 says this. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. You know what? God is still with us. Jesus came as a baby, and then he sent the Holy Spirit, and God is with us. And we find that as we face our giants. You know, when when we got here and we realized our deep financial trouble, God was with us. We called to him. And he provided, didn't he? When we realized what was happening to Mount Vernon and we didn't want to lose any students, God was with us and we called to him. And he provided, didn't he? You heard about it tonight. Most recently, every single time we come across a giant, we call to God and he provides. Most recently, it's been a treasure. We, for our treasure, um, we called to God and we called to God and it seemed to be taking him a long time but you know what it was God's timing I don't think Michael would have been ready back when we first needed a treasure I know he wouldn't have been Um, so we had to wait for God's timing because God knows best and God provided 2nd Chronicles 7 14 says this if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We need to pray, don't we? God has given us an incredible gift. So our prayer for you as a conference and Ron and I especially is this. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And we pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. 
Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that is work within, at work within us, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, the team has done a great job of giving reports, so I just want to share um, some of the things that I would care about as we step into the future. Um, Ellen White said that prayer is the breath of the soul. I want to say that the reports you heard tonight, while there was a lot of human effort, it's only because of God's blessing and answers to prayer that you heard the reports that you heard. I believe <clears throat> that God has done such great things. He deserves the glory. And tonight, we say thank you to God. Um, I want the Ohio Conference to be one of the deepest breathing areas of America that we would learn how to breathe deeply in prayer, individually, corporately. Because I, I read about Pentecost and I long to see it again, close as I've been, I got to see. But I believe that God who created math can multiply and not just use addition. So I, I want us to dream bigger, pray for more. You have not because you ask not. Um, in my father's ministry, he didn't teach, just teach me preaching or how to make visits. He modeled a, being a prayer warrior. So I've had that blessing. He also modeled discipling. Um, when we got here, you know we've been trying to make bricks without straw. Um, we're not wealthy by any means, but I believe that more people are going to become faithful in this conference because the times are serious and the need is real. What I'd like to see us focus on, we started with uh, lay pastor and elders trainings twice a year, and they've been helpful because we have lots of four and three church districts and, and all that sort of thing. But um, the most important thing, no, no offense, we, we have a role to support, but the most important areas for me are the local church and the local school. And I wanna see us get help down to the local church and the local school. Um, there are all types of trainings that are needed, but to start somewhere, it seems to me it would be good for us to come alongside pastors and churches, because here's the deal. When you're in a multi-church district, you feel like a circuit riding preacher. And when you have thousands of members, you feel just wiped out. Uh, and so I've, done, I've been through all these things multiple times, all right? And you wanna disciple your people, and you do the best you can, but when you have a huge church, you have how many funerals a week? I don't even want to tell you. When, you. when you have small churches and areas, you have this sickness come up. You were going to take your brother or sister and teach them Bible studies, and now you've got to go to the hospital. Okay, so here's where I'm at. And it will take more giving because we don't have it yet. But I would like to see ministers who are gifted with personal ministry. I see some of you, you do it well. Come up here and be in different regions of this state, looking out after churches in that region, teaching them, not just telling them how to do it, but actually taking them from the beginning through the whole series, then going with them, letting them do it with the support of that pastor teacher there until they can do it, and then they can take the people that are baptized through that and start multiplying personal ministries workers in our churches. Um, that's something I want to see. The other is, I want to see Ohio grow younger which means there's going to have to be a lot of growth with youth and young adults because a lot of us are getting older, okay? So, but I, I want to see that number come down, not just because I don't care about old people. I am one, okay, so I care. But I, I really want to see this become a youth and young adult movement as well, again, this Adventist church. And I know that it's hard. But if it wasn't hard, we wouldn't need God. And how many times have we almost forgotten how much we need him? This is one thing I know about the youth and young adults of today. Um, they're more interested in intergenerational types of experiences than some of us were when we were young. Mentoring, thank you for leading in that in regions and in our conference. 
I want us to find ways of giving more help for children's ministries, youth ministries, young adult ministries, investing in them and also investing responsibility in them. I mean giving them legitimate and taking them seriously and giving them ministries and trusting with them. And you know what? Yes, they might mess up some. Guess what? So do we, right? I think the devil's held us back a lot because everybody's so afraid of doing it wrong, nobody's doing anything. Okay, so, so I, um, I'm a Halverson. It's a dangerous thing to be. I was a young preacher. I wrote a sermon called The Wittenberg Door and a lot more, all right? Later, I've done my doctoral study focusing on Luther. We know the 95 Theses, but also the ethos of Protestantism was also the priesthood of all believers. So I did a 95 Thesis for the church with the priesthood of all believers. I still remember some of these off the top of my head. I was a young preacher. I'm actually going down to preach at the church I preach this at, Keene, Texas, Southwestern. I'm not even an alumnus. They're having me speak for alumni. I go to a lot of schools I never went to school with. They want me for alumni more than the ones where I actually went to school. So anyway, I preach this sermon, and I, here, here's one of the 95 theses. The church of God is a body made up of many parts. If you had so few parts working, you'd be dead too. Now, one of the things killing us in America is the professionalism of pastors. We need them, but it's supposed to be an army. Not, okay, not this, I pay a dentist, they fix me. I pay a doctor, I pay a trash man. I pay a pastor, he does the work of the church. That has got to stop. It was never God's intent. But it is not enough to call people to do something for God and not teach them how. So I ask you at this point to pray that God will give us the funds and help us find the people that will help strengthen our local churches and our people how to do ministry effectively for Jesus. That's the dream. And growing young, I can't do it, but there are a lot of young people that could be a part of this with us. You have been so good. Um, what I want to do to make our time most effective, because it's already toward nine or after, um, I'll ask all the heads of these departments that gave reports, let's scatter out amongst here so that people that may want to ask a question about youth, Hispanic ministries, treasury, myself, Come ask questions, come share your thoughts, your concerns, and we'll meet with you for that. But let me pray for you before we go. Yes, Tom. In the prayers. Let's do that also in Ohio praise. Oh, will you to talk with you? Excellent. Lord God. It's good to be in your house tonight. But I know that the church isn't a building. It's your people. Thank you for these, your people. Thank you for what you are already doing. But Jesus, the population's huge. And the need is great. May we not be so intimidated that we, we just stand in place. But I know we'll have to go forward on our knees. Teach us to pray. Bring a revival and a reformation, a true one within our hearts, within our churches. May the flame grow brighter in this time of darkness. Teach us how to love. For a message that's not coming from love and showing love will not be your message. Teach us what you've always wanted from your children. And I have hope, Jesus, because if you could do what you did for those 12 disciples at Pentecost, surely you want to do that again and again. And I pray that you would. So draw us closer together and with you. This is my heart's prayer. And I pray it, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. We will stay by to answer questions or to hear your input. All right. Thank you for coming.